there are uh, major upgrades that are coming to the Bitcoin protocol um, that are not like required by any means, but it will add uh, some new abilities that I think will be very helpful for a lot of people. Jimmy, what's the uh, what's the number one secret to, I guess, to the current state of Bitcoin and maybe the next six to 12 months of, of where you see the technology, where you see the coin, where you see the assets going right now? Yeah, uh, so there, there's a major soft fork upgrade that's happening to Bitcoin, and it's called Taproot. And um, the full uh, sort of extent of uh, what what it will enable isn't uh, really apparent right now because a lot of uh, wallets and exchanges and so on aren't really taking advantage of it because it's not active on the network yet. But I think we'll we'll see uh, that play out over the next two or three years. Suffice it to say, it will give a lot more ability to... Um, have a little more privacy on chain. It will make uh, the Lightning Network or Layer Two solutions a lot faster and better. Um, I mean, the, these might sound like gobbledygook if you're not in the industry, uh, but this this is what I sort of like swim in every day. So it, it, it's uh, that that's how I would describe it. There there are uh, major upgrades that are coming to the Bitcoin protocol um, that are not like required by any means, but it will add uh, some new abilities that I think will be very helpful for a lot of people. Very good. If if Bitcoin or cryptocurrency world, if it was a nine inning, you know, uh, let's say baseball mm -hmm. game, what inning do you think we're in right now and why? Uh, I would say maybe second inning. Um, I think the first inning was sort of like the initial sort of enthusiasm stage. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're still very, very early. Um, the latest numbers I've heard, something like 6% of the U.S. Uh, has some exposure to cryptocurrency. And by the way, I, I do make a distinction between cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Um, I, I tend to view Bitcoin very differently uh, than all the other altcoins, uh, largely due to the decentralized nature of Bitcoin, whereas all the altcoins seem to have a single point of failure, what I would call centralized. So um, there there is a difference there. But uh, regarding um, Bitcoin, I, I would say we're in the second inning because we are still early. Not that many people are really involved in it. It's kind of like, I would say, internet circa 1995, 1996 or something like that, where a lot of people were talking about it, uh, but not necessarily like actually on the internet, um, uh, although some people were obviously. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So the second inning, uh, it's interesting, only 6% of the US ha has some. And that's interesting to you about the altcoin versus the, um, uh, the, the, the decentralized uh, aspect of Bitcoin versus centralized. Would you dive into that a little bit more or, mm -hmm. or just because I think that's really important to understand. Yeah, so uh, decentralized means that there is no center. There's no single point of failure. There's no uh, place that can get regulated or choked or something to that effect. And all other sort of like cash systems before Bitcoin essentially suffered from that flaw, including um, the, you know, the US dollar and many other currencies of different places where uh, if if a single entity controls it, there are all sorts of bad things that can happen, including hyperinflation. Um, something that's more decentralized is something like gold, where you don't need anyone's permission. If you ha own some land, you can attempt to dig gold out of that ground and so on. Um, but a, a lot of people don't really understand the difference between the two. So I, I would put it as you don't need anyone's permission to go get gold, but you do need permission if you want to print the hundred dollar bill. Um, and that's uh, otherwise you would get like, uh, you know, arrested by the Secret Service and so on. Bitcoin, it's kind of unintuitive, but Bitcoin is actually decentralized and digital at the same time. Whereas all of these altcoins have a central controller, a choke point somewhere that can get regulated, somebody that um, that can uh, do something to make it worse. Um, and, you know, uh, Gary Gensler, I think, testified before uh, Congress yesterday and pointed out that other than Bitcoin, he thinks uh, most of these other coins are illegal securities. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, that's really important, right? To know that the, mm. uh, <laughs> you because you've got to get all, you know, if you're doing something that's going to be doing currency and it's worldwide and it's changing things, you got to you got to ideally get as much much support from all facets of government or the people of the banks, right? So mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin seems to be the one that's that's sticking the most. Is that a fair summary so far? Well, I, I would say I, I would put it a little differently. It doesn't need permission from anybody else. It's it's decentralized. It's kind of like if I you and I wanted to trade gold, um, you know, executive order six one zero two with standing, like we we could kind of do it without anyone's permission. Uh, with 
every other system, you need somebody's permission. If I if I need to give you a bank transfer or pay you with a credit card or whatever, there's somebody that always sits in the middle that sort of like controls that transaction. With Bitcoin, there's no third party. Uh, with, with a lot of these altcoins and so on, uh, so say something like the Poly Network, which had a major hack a, a few weeks ago for $600 million, uh, somebody, somebody basically was able to uh, use a loophole in the smart contract to drain it of $600 million. Um, and the Poly Network people basically went out to all of the exchanges and all of the uh, people that were mining and said, do not mine any transactions from this particular address. And they all complied. So in a sense, that that's a centralized system. And they the uh, person that took the 600 million ended up settling for 500,000, less than you know 0.1% of the nominal value, uh, in large part because there's a central entity that kind of you need to you need permission from or else you're not going to be able to transact with. So yeah. Bitcoin is decentralized in the same way that like a piece of gold might be. Uh, whereas, you know, all these altcoins are not that different than fiat money, the US dollar, the Japanese yen or your credit card or whatever. If they don't like a particular transaction, they're going to reverse it or censor it or do all sorts of things with it that you're uh, not uh, allowed to do. Excellent. 